What does the cross of Jesus mean? It's more than so. A pleasant good morning, a pleasant good day to everyone in this lovely island, Tobago, and this country, the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. We greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the program Moments with Truth. We trust that as we spend these moments around the Word of God and speak about that one who is altogether lovely, God's name will be glorified, and those who are saved will be encouraged, built up in their most holy faith. Those who are not saved will be wonderfully, gloriously, and eternally saved. Before we read the Scriptures of Truth, shall we seek the Lord's face in prayer? Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we gladly approach thee again, and we do so in the highest name that we know, the highest name that we own, thy Son, who is our Lord and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We worship thee, Father, and thank thee for this opportunity that we have in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago in declaring the truth of the gospel without any hindrances. We pray that this will continue until traveling days are over. Again, we thank thee for this program, Moments with Truth. Bless it for thy glory and grant to our Father that those who listen today and are not saved will be convicted and be converted. Those who are saved be encouraged, built up in our most holy faith, backsliders be restored, and above all, the name of thy Son be honored, praised, and glorified. We pray again for those who are not well in their bodies. We pray that they will, according to thy mind and will, restore to a measure of good health and strength, and we will be very careful in ascending through Christ all the honor, the praise, and the glory. These, moment, these, these things we ask with our thanksgiving through Jesus, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I would like us to turn today to the first book in our Bibles. The first book in our Bibles is Genesis. Genesis chapter 35, and we shall read only one verse, verse number 18. Genesis chapter 35 and verse number 18. The, vo the word of God says, And it came to pass, as her soul was in departing, for she died, that she called his name Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. Shall we read that verse again, please? Genesis chapter 35 and verse 18. And it came to pass, as her soul was in departing, for she died, that she called his name Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin. We know and trust that the Lord will bless the public reading of his word to our hearts for Christ's sake. Amen. Today, I would like us to consider as our subject aspects of Christ, features of Christ. The Bible tells us here, and the passage from which we have read, tells us concerning the birth of this child. Rachel was the mother, and she brought forth this child. And of course, it was for her husband, Jacob. The Bible tells us that this woman, Rachel, called the name of the child Benoni. But his father, Jacob, called him Benjamin, feet tears of Christ. This verse reveals some truths concerning the person and work as well as the worth of our Lord Jesus Christ. A feet tear or feet tears. Feet tears are particular appearances or qualities. A feet tear, a distinctive attribute or aspect. We shall be considering some distinctive attributes about the Lord Jesus Christ. These attributes about which we shall be speaking come from this verse 
from which we have read. And so we shall be looking at those two names that were given to this child. The mother called his name Benoni. What does Benoni mean? Benoni means son, the son of my sorrow. The son of my sorrow. When this child was born, Rachel said, he is the son of my sorrow. One of the fifties of the Lord Jesus Christ is, the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 3, he was the man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Jesus Christ was the son of sorrow. Sorrow. The songwriter tells us, man of sorrows, what a name. For the son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah. What a savior. He was, he was on this earth, the son or the man of sorrows. The Bible makes it clear. The Lord Jesus Christ, while he was here on this earth, said to us, foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man have not where to lay his head. The foxes knew where they were going. The camels know, knew where they were going. The animals knew where they were going. The birds knew where they were nesting. But there was one person who did not know where he would have laid his head. He was the man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. But when we consider those sorrows, there is no sorrow that can be compared with the sorrow that Jesus experienced when he went to Calvary. The man of sorrows. Dear friends in Tobago, dear people in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, we want to tell you that there are so many who are experiencing sorrows, many sorrows. So many people are experiencing sorrows from one time kind to the next. But whatever sorrows through which we have been passing or through which we shall pass, God wants us to know that no sorrow can be compared with the sorrow of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes we sing, Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. We thank God that whatever the sorrows are, the answer does not come from man. The answer does not come from earth. The answer comes from heaven. The answer comes from God. And so we shall be considering this man, this feature concerning the sorrow of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the Bible tells us, come and see if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow, where the Lord has afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger. Where was this, this sorrow experienced? by the Lord Jesus Christ. Where was it experienced? First of all, I would like us to consider why? Why did he experience such sorrow? He experienced sorrow because of sin. S-I-N, sin. It does not mean that he was a sinner. He was no sinner. But because of my sin, because of your sin, he experienced and he was the man of sorrows. Dear friends, we want you to observe, we want you to understand that sin always causes sorrow. It brings sorrow to an individual. It brings sorrow to families. It brings sorrow to a country. Sin always brings sorrow. Dear friends, if you continue in sin, if you continue to reject the Lord Jesus Christ, 
you will always experience sorrow. And the greatest sorrow you will experience for all eternity is in hell and in the lake of fire if you fail to repent. So the sorrow of the Lord Jesus Christ. He experienced sorrow because of your sin and because of my sin. He did no sin. He knew no sin. Neither was any guile found in his mouth. The spotless lamb of God. The man of sorrow. The son of sorrow. The Bible tells us also, not only does God want us to know with respect to why he experienced sorrow, but where did he experience that sorrow? The place was Calvary. Calvary. When Jesus Christ went and he was crucified at the place called Calvary, he experienced sorrow like no other person has ever. Jesus Christ experienced sorrow because of my sin and yours. Jesus Christ experienced it at the place called Calvary. When men drove those nails through his hands, through his feet, the, the spear through his side, when they spat upon him, when they buffeted him, when they said, if thou be the Christ, save thyself and us, sorrow and love flowed mingled down. Did he hear such love and sorrow meet? Or fonts composed so rich a crown? The songwriter says, When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. Dear friends, Jesus experienced sorrow at the place called Calvary. Calvary, when men did all that they could have done. Demons and the devil did all that they could have done. The father was now dealing with Christ because of sin. The father turned his back upon Christ. He was abandoned for the first time. And upon the cross, three hours of darkness, the man of sorrows cried. Prophetically, it was said, and it was fulfilled at Calvary. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus experienced sorrow. He was abandoned because of my sin and yours. And it was the only way through which we can be saved by the grace of God. He was the man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And so the Bible tells us when Simeon came and took Jesus in his arms, he said, he said to Mary, not only mine eyes have seen thy salvation as he spoke to the father, but he said to Mary, a sword shall pierce through thine own soul. He was referring to Christ as the man of sorrows when he shall die at the place called Calvary. His name is Benoni, son of my sorrow. Dear friends in Tobago, there is a man who experienced sorrow that you and I can have everlasting joy, everlasting peace, peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So the Bible tells us concerning Benoni, aspects of Christ. One of these aspects is his son, the man of sorrows. But notice that as the mother called him Benoni, Jacob the father called him Benjamin, Benjamin. Why did Jacob call him Benjamin? Benjamin means son of my right hand. Son of my right hand. This morning, we want to tell you not only that Christ is the sorrowing one or the suffering one or the one who experienced sorrow, but we want to tell you that Jesus Christ is the supreme one. In other words, Jesus Christ died as the suffering one. Jesus was buried as the suffering one. 
but he rose from the dead, the supreme one. What a person, highest in authority. Friends, we want to tell you that the only one who died, the only one who was buried, the only one who is risen from the dead is Jesus, Benjamin, son of my right hand, the Lord of life and glory. Every other man who died is dead, dead, dead. Their bodies have seen corruption, corruption, corruption. Friends, we are here to tell you that there was one who suffered and died. His body never saw corruption. The moment a person dies, his body begins to decay. But Jesus Christ, his body never decayed. Never decayed. Why? Because he was not a sinner. He did no sin. He knew no sin. Neither was any guile found in his mouth. Jesus was buried. He is risen from the dead. He is the supreme one. Friends, this morning the Bible tells us he is the elevated one. The word of God tells us, lift up ye gates, ye everlasting doors, and let the king of glory come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord mighty in battle. What a wonderful savior. Dear friends, we want to tell you that in the world and in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, there are times when some dignitary comes to our shores and as the dignitary comes and alights from the aircraft, there is the red carpet for that person and for the others on which they can walk, honoring that person or those persons. We also have the honor guard in the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, honoring. But friends, we want to tell you that when Jesus Christ died and was buried and rose from the dead and ascended into glory, we want to say reverently, there was a red carpet laid for him. There was the God of honor for him. Lift up ye gates, ye everlasting doors, and let the king of glory come in. Everyone in heaven stood to welcome this glorious person. He is supreme. There is none like him. Another aspect of Christ is the supremacy of him. What a wonderful savior. What a wonderful savior. Christ has for sin atonement made. What a wonderful savior. We want to thank God for such a person like the Lord Jesus Christ. His supremacy is seen in resurrection. He is risen from the dead. His supremacy is seen in ascension. Jesus Christ did not only rise. Jesus Christ ascended. And the Bible tells us, sit thou on my right hand. Benjamin's name means son of my right hand. The father has put Jesus at his right hand, crowned with glory and with honor. What a savior. Everyone in glory bows in worship to this wonderful person. They worship him. The Bible tells us concerning his supremacy in resurrection, his supremacy in ascension, his supremacy in adoration. He is worshipped and is the only person who must be worshipped. The devil wants worship. The devil wanted Christ to worship him. And the devil has many people who are worshipping him. But there is only one person who is worthy. Worthy, worthy is the lamb. Worthy, worthy is the lamb. Worthy, worthy is the lamb that was slain. Jesus Christ, his supremacy is seen in adoration, in worship. The songwriter says, Oh, worship the king, all glorious above. Oh, gratefully sing his power and his love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days, 
pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise. Oh, sing of his might. Oh, sing of his grace. Whose robe is the light. Whose canopy is space. His chariots of wrath. Deep thunderclouds form. And round his throne, everyone bows and worships him. Oh, worship the king. It is seen in his adoration. Everyone worships him. He is the man of sorrows. He is the son of righteousness. He is the one who is supreme. But finally, not only is he the supreme one, but he is the saving one. He is the one who saves from sin. The Bible tells us, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. The Bible tells us, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Features, aspects of Christ, the sorrow, the suffering one, the son of sorrow, the son who is supreme. He is the saving one. Are you saved? Have you repented and trusted Christ as your savior? If you haven't, why not say yes to the savior this morning? Why not say yes to him? While he so gently, so tenderly pleads, oh, accept him today. If you will, bow your heads, bow your hearts, and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If you do that, he will save you. He will take away sorrow. He will place joy. As sometimes we sing with the scholars in Sunday school, if you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy, let Jesus come in to your heart. We trust that you will come to this Savior and be saved before it is forever too late. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we bow before thee at the close of this program, Moments with Truth, and we thank thee again for these aspects of Christ. He is the man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, but we thank thee that he is the supreme one who rose from the dead and sits at the Father's right hand crowned with glory and with honor. We thank thee that he is the saving one. He saves, he keeps, and he satisfies. Grant that those who have listened and viewed this program moments with truth and are not saved will come to this Savior and be saved before it is forever too late. Bless again thy word. Save precious souls and the glory, the honor, the praise will be thine. These mercies we ask, giving thee our thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.